Hello, my name is Janice Denise Glasper, and today I'm going to be reading The Profound Significance of Ruth Waddy's Legacy on Black Women Printmakers. There are years that ask questions and years that answer, Zora Neale Hurston wrote in her classic novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. The defiant Harlem Renaissance writer coincidentally shares the same January 7th birthday as Ruth Waddy, a talented printmaker and painter who began creating art well into her 50s. She spent three decades sacrificing dreams, putting off educational pursuits in order to work odd jobs, and knowing that these strenuous tasks were preparing her physically, mentally, and emotionally for a more meaningful future purpose. I had a very active imagination. I would tell stories, fairy tales mostly to my younger sisters, Ruth Waddy said to Karen Ann Mason for the African American Artists of Los Angeles Oral History Project. Ruth would eventually be among the foremothers of black women printmakers, at least in America, the other artists including Margaret Taylor Burroughs, Elizabeth Catlett, Dr. Samela Lewis, and Louise Jefferson. Their proficiency in lithography, woodcut, linoleum, etching, and other printmaking processes candidly address early 20th century Black experiences, the unfair segregation policies set in place, the intimate family and friendship connections, and other reoccurring themes. Ruth's particular road to art involves a long, unconventional journey, unlike typical artist biographies. Born in Lincoln, Nebraska, and raised in predominantly white Minneapolis, Minnesota, Willanna Ruth Gilliam and her younger sisters Margaret and Gladys were the three children of John Moses Gilliam, a railroad waiter, and Willie Anna Chorum Gilliam, a homemaker who could speak fluent German, sing, and play piano. Ruth preferred her middle name, having been ruthlessly called Banana by her teasing peers. After John Moses died in 1922, Ruth was 13, learning piano and playing the organ for her Methodist church while her mother took on a kitchen job at Raglan's candy store. During Ruth's brief time at University of Minnesota, the Great Depression hit hard and her aging mother struggled. So Ruth quit college and fled to Chicago for higher pay, working as a live-in maid taking night classes, and eventually marrying William Waddy. Ruth and William had a daughter, Marianna, later Miriam Anna Al Waddy, and later divorced. Furthermore, Ruth was frequently attending Works Progress Administration WPA meetings at the Southside Community Arts Center, befriending Margaret Taylor Burroughs, by then a renowned artist and prominent art collector. On my days off, I would go to Margaret's house, Ruth said. I met Elizabeth Catlett through Samela Lewis. Ruth applied as a blueprint reader and solderer for radios at Chicago's Lockheed Airport Corporation, a job that would have been financially beneficial. When they refused to hire her due to her race, Ruth moved to Los Angeles and continued shifting between employment, becoming a graveyard shift assembly line Rosie Riveter, courtesy of her sister Margaret's first husband, at Douglas Airport Corporation, later a postal worker, and an admissions officer at Los Angeles County Hospital. She even opened up a short-lived hot dog stand. However, during her clerk interview at age 51, an undiagnosed epilepsy forced her into early retirement. Ruth enrolled in the famous artist's home study course and attended the Otis School of Art, studying printmaking. Her descent into art making also compelled her to observe what was happening to those already in the field. After noticing that local museums and galleries offered no exhibition opportunities to black artists, that the big institutions purposely ignored great talent, Ruth launched the Art West Associated, a network of West Coast black artists spreading awareness about their art to the youth and local organizations. She championed unseen marginalized voices with enough heart and compassion to vouch for the validity of their narratives. Certain histories survive and repeat because someone thought it important enough to remember, and Ruth ensured that Black artists were remembered. 
The National Endowment for the Arts awarded Ruth the opportunity to collect art for prints by American Negro artists, a book co-written with Rosemary von Stutnitz, a German-American book publisher and president of the Los Angeles Cultural Exchange Center, and it edited it by T. V. Roloff Lanner, 1965. Ruth traveled across the country via bus, meeting artists, essentially strangers, in various host cities, browsing through their prints and selecting her favorites via her own personal instincts. The artists were also responsible for providing her lodgings and one hot meal. Often they asked Ruth, well, how did you get into art if you don't know anything about it? The thing is that I have worked all my life, Ruth said, and I know that anybody who is good, they worked. And I don't even care if you have talent, you still have to work. Art is work. Ruth's linoleum prints illustrate her childhood, current events or travel memories as content material. For example, in the exhorters, adults and children circle around the intense praising action. Two figures raising opposing hands that give the black and white piece added symmetry. Intricate bow outlines individualize her active cast of worshipping characters with distinctive clothing patterns, hairstyles, hats, head wraps, and body gestures. Perhaps this heavily suggests her Methodist upbringing. Even the background's distinctive mark making accentuates the space they inhabit. In both graduating from kindergarten to grade one and African braids, Ruth carved light out from darkness. The former has a painterly quality, especially noted in the children's graduation gowns, compacted with endless chiseling. She showcases an adeptness at human anatomy, invested in conveying the proportions as accurately as her style allots. African braids, a confident and assured linoleum print, reveals the intimate pastime between mothers and daughters, aunts and nieces, and other hairstyling relationships. From birth, black hair care has been the cornerstone to beauty, a crowning glory of black femininity. Ruth made a few contour lines to tell the timeless story of a yawning child getting her hair done by a confident braider focused on her task. The cloudy, grainy background may seem undone as though it represents a dream or memory, adding metaphorical context to the work. Ruth soon exhibited in Leipzig, Germany at the Biannual International Books and Graphic Show. The next year, as part of the Negro and American Art Exhibition sponsored by the California Arts Commission, Ruth, who was suggested by artist Charles White, travel alongside Margaret Taylor Burroughs to the Soviet Union. In 1969, Ruth and Dr. Samela Lewis published a book called Black Artists on Art, and a second volume was released two years later. Among prominent black women printmakers redefining what it means to reproduce an image, albeit two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally, Ruth's contemporaries were also making great headway on the East Coast. Her longtime friend Margaret, an artist, writer, poet, educator, and arts organizer, was born Victoria Margaret Taylor in St. Rose, Louisiana, her father too a railroad worker, farming and laboring respectively. When her family moved to Chicago, Margaret attended high school with poet Gwendolyn Brooks. After earning a teaching certificate at Chicago Teachers College, and a BFA from the School of the Art Institute Chicago, Margaret helped open the Southside Community Arts Center and the Disabled Museum of African American History with her husband, Charles Gordon Burroughs. Elizabeth Catlett, perhaps the best known of the five pioneers, was born Alice Elizabeth Catlett, raised in Washington, D.C., later attending Howard University, taught by teachers Lois Mayu Jones and Alan Locke. She studied with Grant Wood at the University of Iowa, and one of her roommates was poet Margaret Walker. Elizabeth specialized in drawing, printmaking, and sculpture, often visiting Chicago, taking lithography courses at the Southside Community Art Center. Ruth's collaborator, Dr. Samela Lewis, 
painter, printmaker, and art historian, was born Samela Sanders in New Orleans, Louisiana, and raised in Ponchatella, Louisiana. At Dillard University, Elizabeth was one of Samela's mentors. Samela then attended Hampton University and Ohio State University, going on to become the first black woman to complete a doctorate in fine art and art history. Black Artists on Art presents the work of some of the many individuals who deserve to be called artists, Samela wrote. They are individuals of varying degrees of interests and abilities. They are individuals who continue as active producing artists in spite of the many obstacles that confront all artists. Samela later founded the Museum of African American Art in Los Angeles. Another printmaker around Ruth's era was Louis E. Jefferson, born in Washington, D.C. Louise attended Howard, the Hunter College in New York City, studying art composition, design, and lithography, and lastly, Columbia University, taking up graphic arts and printing processes. She was also a calligrapher, cartographer, and photographer, and a founding member of the Harlem Artists Guild, alongside Augusta Savage, Selma Burke, Gwendolyn Bennett, and others. Louise published The Decorative Arts of Africa, illustrating her visits to Cameroon, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Egypt, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Zimbabwe, and many other African countries. Her papers are held at Tulane University's Amistad Research Center. Smithsonian Library owns Louise's copy of Dr. Samela Lewis and Ruth Waddy's Black Artist on Art, the gift courtesy of Pearl Bowser, a noted film scholar. Other prolific printmakers existed during and after Ruth Waddy's time, an ongoing lineage redefining image reproduction. Faith Ringgold, Yvonne Catchings, Margot Humphrey, Evangeline Montgomery, Amina Brenda Lynn Robinson, Rachel Perrier, Sandra Rowe, Belka Sayon, Ayana Moore, Avita Tazino, Kara Walker, Virginia Chiholto, Tracy Memes, Angela Pilgrim, Deborah Richardson Wood, and best friends Emma Amos and Vivian Brown. The Black Women of Print organization started by Tanikia Ward and Delita Martin contains members Latoya Hobbs, Ann Johnson, Sam Vernon, Chloe Alexander, Stephanie Santana, Karen Rivas, and Lisa Hunt. Their contributions to this medium continues growing and expanding each year. Furthermore, Zora Neale Hurston's Years Asking Questions and Years That Answer makes perfect sense in regards to Ruth Waddy. Although lacking the art world semantics and formal art school training, Ruth's later influential years responded to heavy questions regarding society's problematic isms racism, sexism, ageism, ableism. She defied limitations, shaping into a self-taught, self-assured genius, understanding the breadth of her worth. Everyone who met her respected her, trusted her. In addition to demonstrating remarkable leadership by spearheading the keen importance of building a valiant black arts community, her initiative prevailed in all faucets of her life. If she wasn't making expressive, meaningful prints and paintings, Ruth was out in the world promoting the unseen, using her voice as a platform, brave in the face of dangerous epilepsy. She received an honorary doctorate from the Otis College of Arts and awards from the Woman's Caucus, the California African American Museum, and the League of Allied Artists. Art is not an intellectual exercise. Art is spiritual, Ruth wrote. The black artist will be at the head of procession because he has never been permitted substitution of things for human values. From whatever point of view, aesthetic or social, he has always had to tell it like it is. On May 24, 2003, Ruth Waddy passed away at the age of 94 in San Francisco, California. 
leaving behind a rich, beguiling legacy that still inspires Black artists today. Her papers are also held at Tulane University's Amistad Research Center in New Orleans, Louisiana.